Hey everyone, so our purpose today is going to be testing all the work we've already done. So what we're going to do first is we need to add in a power button. So with two wires that are both pretty long, maybe a foot and a half or so, we're going to go ahead and flip the circuit board over and on the far side you should see a set of pins that looks like that in the video. And like I am right now, you're going to go ahead and solder one wire each to the bottom two pins. And what we're going to do is wire these to a freestanding tack switch so that we can turn the monitor on and off easily without having to deal with uh, the original monitor's power button. So after you've got that done, your setup should be looking fairly similar to what we've got here, uh, depending on which parts you decided to include or exclude from your design. So I just want to take a minute, look over your own design, make sure you aren't missing anything, uh, go back through the other videos if you need to, if there were any steps that you missed. So what I've got here are the two opposite wire ends for the two wires that we just soldered to make the power button off of the circuit board. So what I'm holding in my hand is the tack switch we're going to end up soldering the wires to and use as our temporary power button. So what we're going to do is add a little bit of solder to both the ends of the wires and then to two of the side-by-side -side pins on the tack switch. So now I'm going to go ahead and carefully solder one of the wires, it doesn't matter which, to one of the pins on the tack switch. And then after I've got that done, I'm going to go ahead and take the other wire and attach it, solder it, to the pin that is right next to the one that we just soldered to. So now you should have a freestanding, temporary, clickable power button. Next, we're going to wire up the 360 power supply to power the screen. Uh, I'm using an old power supply just because I had it lying around and had no other use for it. Uh, you could use your, if you're making this out of slim, you could use the 360 slim power supply. Uh, the wiring would probably be just slightly different. Same idea though. So you can see I've got four wires chosen. I've got one yellow, one black, the red, and the blue. And so first I'm going to go ahead and pay attention to the red and blue. I've already got them stripped and ready to go, so I'm just going to add a little bit of solder to each one. So what we're going to be doing with these two wires is actually soldering them together. And what that's going to do is anytime the power supply is plugged in, it's going to turn the power supply on. And that will generate the 12 volts coming through the yellow wires, which is exactly what we need. So. Just be aware that anytime you plug this power supply in from now on, there is going to be live voltage running across all of the lines, so be careful. So now what you're going to need to find are the three wires that should be coming off of the circuit board. Uh, that are the 5 volt, the 12 volt, and the ground that are prepared to run to the 360 power supply. On the far side of the screen you can see that I've got the yellow wire, the blue and red conjoined wires, and the black wire from the 360 power supply ready to come and meet up with their respective circuit board counterpart so that we can get this all wired together. First up in this video uh, I'm gonna wire the red one uh, from the circuit board to the red and blue joint connection at the uh, 360. So as you can see all three of those wires need to come together and that should supply the 5 volt line to both the enable plug on the power supply and to the screen. Next up I'm connecting the yellow to the yellow which means 12 volts to 12 volts. Simple enough and here the black to black ground to ground. So that should give all the power we need to our circuit board which then sends the 12 volts right on over to the screen for the backlights. As a side note you're going to want to be very careful that these guys don't ever come into contact. Make sure they're well spaced and you've got plenty of room to work. 
Next we're going to be wiring the transformer up. Now I know in the last video I said that these wires could be up to two, three feet long and I really wouldn't recommend that because our own testing has shown that these wires are, uh, if they get too long it'll cause problems with the screen. So I would recommend that you try to keep them about a foot in length less if you can. Sorry about the misinformation but I figure trimming those wires shouldn't be a big deal if you have to. So what we've done is you can see that there's just, we've still got the pen markings on our transformer to show which one should go where and because of our marking it's nice and easy. You just go ahead, you line up your numbers, get a little solder on each joint and connect them up and you're good to go. So do that for the side with the two pins and then switch it over and get the four on the other side. Once you're done, your transformer should look something like this mess of wires here, and you should be good to go. Next, what we're going to be doing is wiring in a temporary VGA port so that we can get some input going into our monitor while we're testing it. So I'm actually using the VGA port straight off of the circuit board. Uh, I made sure it's intact, none of the pins are missing or anything like that so that we don't have any errors caused by the VGA port itself. Uh, if you destroyed yours while you were taking it off the circuit board, it's not a big deal. These VGA ports are only like 50 cents at Radio Shack, so while you're there, grab a couple. If you plan on doing any sorts of this stuff, they come in handy all the time. So what I'm doing is just looking at a pinout. Um, I'll link one in the description of this video. And I'm just following that uh, with the labels that I put on the wires and just soldering it back together on the connector. Unfortunately, it's going to be a little bit impossible for me to try to describe where each wire goes um, from this video, but I'll be sure to put the link in the description and you can cross-reference that with what you're seeing on the video so that you'll be able to see what's going on. The one thing that's really hard to screw up about VGA is that the middle row is all grounds. So at least you know you're going to get that right. I'm not going to fast forward through this part of the video, uh, but like I said, I'm also not going to be explaining much of it. Uh, if you labeled correctly and if you can figure out how to read the pinout, which should take you just a couple of minutes, uh, it shouldn't be a problem at all. But I'll leave the video on normal speed so you can go ahead and watch through it if you need to. And with these last vertical sync and horizontal sync wires attached, we should be just about ready to test out the full system. So it's finally time to see if all your hard work paid off, or if maybe you need to go back and recheck a couple steps. 
So what we've got here, you can see we've got our power button ready to go. We've got a VGA cable running from our temporary input over to my laptop over on the desk to the right. You can see I've made sure all the contacts are spaced out and nothing's touching so that we don't run into any issues. Also, you'll notice that the under the monitor here, I've got the monitor suspended on plastic. And then underneath it, I've got the circuit board and the inverter also sitting on top of plastic and spaced out from the back of the um, monitor. You can see that I've got the ribbon cable on the right there plugged in. And then on the left that I just passed over, I've got the two backlight cords plugged in as well. You can see I've also got the transformer uh, sitting up on some plastic just up above the table. And then I've got the 360 connections over here and made sure they're all spaced out and they're also up off the table. Everything's off the table just to make sure that there aren't any loose metal scraps or anything hanging around that are going to short anything out. So you want to make sure everything's good to go before you plug the power supply in because like I said, as soon as you plug it in, that light's going to go green and all the voltages are going to go live. So that means current is flowing through everything, so you need to start being really careful. Next, I'm going to go ahead and hit this power switch, and hopefully some magic should start happening. And as you can see, everything seems to be working great. Uh, when you first turn the monitor on, the menu does come up, but it'll fade in just a couple seconds, and then you'll just be left with whatever your input is. Don't be worried if it doesn't come up like uh, adjusted to the correct size uh, because computers use uh, some of the lines that we didn't connect on the VGA port to detect the size of a monitor while the 360 doesn't require those. So if everything worked, congratulations. Uh, if not, uh, go ahead and look back through, check your connections, uh, go back through the other videos, double check some other things, or you know, leave a comment, maybe we can help you work through it. Uh, but hopefully everything's working for everyone so far. And congratulations, you've gone through what is probably the hardest part of this whole project.